Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at electrochemical cells. Electrochemical cells are formed when two electrodes, shown here in the diagram, are connected in a circuit with an electrolyte. An electrolyte is an ionic solution which will allow conduction of electricity. When two electrodes are connected in a circuit with an electrolyte and a voltmeter, then electricity can be generated. If we look at page 10 of the data book, you will find the electrochemical series. The larger the distance between the two electrodes on the electrochemical series, the larger the voltage which will be produced. The electrons will always travel from the more reactive metal higher up on the electrochemical series to the less reactive metal lower down on the electrochemical series. In this case here, we have a zinc and a copper electrode. Zinc is higher up on the electrochemical series than copper, therefore the electrons will flow this way around the circuit. If we were to replace the copper with silver, then the voltage produced would be even larger because the gap between zinc and silver is larger than that between the zinc and copper. Pause the video now and find the direction of electrons which will flow for each of these pairs of electrodes. For the first pair of electrodes, magnesium is more reactive than copper, therefore the electrons will flow from the magnesium to the copper. In the second example, aluminium is more reactive than silver, therefore the electrons will flow from aluminium to silver. In the third example, copper is more reactive than silver, and therefore the electrons will flow from B to A. And finally, magnesium is more reactive than aluminium, therefore the electrons will flow from magnesium to aluminium. A series of electrochemical cells are set up. Electrode A is kept constant as copper and electrode B is changed. Order the pairs from the largest to smallest voltage. Pause the video now. For this question, you need to use page 10 of your data book. Copper is quite near the bottom of the electrochemical series. If we've held this constant, then the only thing that is changing is the other electrode and this will dictate how big the voltage is. The largest voltage will be produced between copper and the metal which is furthest away on the electrochemical series. In this case, the largest voltage will be between copper and magnesium. The next largest voltage will be between copper and zinc. And the third largest will be between copper and nickel. The smallest voltage will be produced between copper and lead. We can also set up electrochemical cells using two beakers. In this case, we take an electrode and we put it in an electrolyte solution of its own ions. Here we have zinc within zinc nitrate solution and copper within copper nitrate solution. To complete the circuit, we need something called an ion bridge. An ion bridge is usually a piece of paper which has been soaked in a salt solution and allows ions to flow between the two beakers. We always have ions flowing in the ion bridge and electrons flowing in the wires. The same applies that the electrons will travel from the more reactive metal to the less reactive metal. In this case, they'll be travelling from the zinc to the copper in this direction. Ions will then move within the bridge to balance this. We need to be able to write out the oxidation, reduction and redox equations for what is happening in the beakers. If we use page 10 of the data book, the metal or the equation which is higher up will always get flipped over as it will be oxidised. The metal which is lower down will stay written as it is. If you look at page 10 you can see that zinc is higher up than copper, therefore we need to flip over the equation. We have zinc metal in the electrode which is oxidising to zinc 2 plus ions into the solution, releasing two electrons. In the other beaker, the copper will stay as it is written in page 10. We have copper 2 plus ions in the beaker. These will gain two electrons in a reduction reaction to produce copper solid. We can then combine these two equations together. We have zinc plus the copper ions plus two electrons to give us zinc ions plus two electrons plus copper. We can then cancel the electrons to get the overall redox reaction.
In this reaction, the zinc will become zinc ions. This means that the zinc electrode will start to get smaller. The copper electrode, on the other hand, will start to get bigger as the copper ions within the solution start to pick up electrons, depositing copper solid on the surface of the electrode. Pause the video now and write the oxidation, reduction and overall redox equations for this electrochemical cell. Magnesium is more reactive than copper, therefore the electrons will travel in this direction in the cell. This means that magnesium will be oxidised. We need to flip over the magnesium equation from page 10 in the databook to give magnesium becoming magnesium 2 plus ions plus 2 electrons. In the copper beaker, the copper ions will be reduced to copper metal. You can keep this equation the same way that it is written on page 10 of the databook. We can then combine the oxidation and reduction equations to give an overall redox. We have magnesium plus copper ions plus two electrons to give magnesium ions plus two electrons plus copper. We can cancel the electrons and rewrite out the redox equation. Magnesium plus copper two to give magnesium two plus plus copper. The magnesium electrode will start to get smaller as it loses electrons and becomes magnesium ions in the beaker. The electrons will travel around the circuit to the copper electrode, where the copper ions in solution will pick up the electrons and deposit copper atoms on the surface of the electrode. Other ions will move through the ion bridge to rebalance the charges. Pause the video now and write the oxidation, reduction and overall redox equations for this electrochemical cell. In this cell we have aluminium and copper. Aluminium is more reactive than copper, therefore the electrons will travel from the aluminium to the copper. This means that the aluminium will be oxidised and is the one which is higher up in the electrochemical series. This means we need to flip over the aluminium equation. So we'll have aluminium becoming aluminium 3 plus ions plus 3 electrons. In the copper beaker, the, the equation will stay as it is written. We'll have copper 2 plus ions plus two electrons to give copper metal. Before we can combine these, we need to make sure they have the same number of electrons. This means that we need to multiply the aluminium equation by two and the copper equation by three. This will give us two aluminium to become two aluminium ions plus six electrons. And then we'll have three copper ions plus six electrons to give three copper metal. We can then combine the two equations. We'll have two aluminium plus three copper ions plus six electrons to become two aluminium ions plus six electrons plus three copper. We can then cancel the electrons on either side and rewrite the redox equation. Two aluminium reacting with three copper ions to give two aluminium ions plus three copper. We can also have electrochemical cells where there are no metals. In these cells, we use graphite as our electrodes. Here we have non-metal solutions. They are linked using an iron bridge and connected with a voltmeter, as the other cells have been. The process is exactly the same. The more reactive solution will be oxidised and the less reactive solution will be reduced. In this case, we have potassium iodide solution and bromine. Iodide is higher up on the electrochemical series than bromine is. They're both quite near the bottom. This means the electrons will flow from this beaker to this beaker. This means that the iodide will be oxidised and lose electrons. We have to flip over this equation. We have two iodide ions reacting together to form two electrons and iodine. This is our oxidation. In the other beaker, we can write out the equation as it is in the data book. We have bromine, which is Br2, plus the two electrons to form two bromide ions. We can then combine these two equations together. We have our two iodide ions, plus bromine, plus two electrons, to give two electrons, plus iodine, plus two bromide ions. 
we can then cancel the electrons and rewrite out the redox equation. Two iodide ions plus bromine to give iodine plus two bromide ions. For each pair of solutions, state which direction the electrons will flow. Use page 10 of the databook. Pause the video now. In the first cell, beaker A contains chlorine solution, whereas beaker B has a silver electrode. If we have a look at the databook, we'll find that silver is above chlorine on the electrochemical series. This means that the electrons will flow from the silver electrode to the chlorine solution, going from beaker B to beaker A. In the second cell, we have potassium iodide solution and hydrogen peroxide solution. Looking at page 10 of the databook, we can see that iodide is above hydrogen peroxide, which is right at the bottom of page 10. This means that the electrons will flow from beaker A to beaker B. Looking at the final electrochemical cell, we have iron sulfate solution in beaker A and we have a tin electrode in beaker B. Tin sits above sulfate on the electrochemical series. Therefore, tin will be oxidised and the electrons will travel from beaker B to beaker A. Write the oxidation, reduction and overall redox equations for this electrochemical cell. Pause the video now. In this cell, we have chlorine solution in the left-hand beaker and we have a silver electrode in silver 1 nitrate solution in the right-hand beaker. Silver sits above chlorine on the electrochemical series. This means the electrons will travel in this direction. This means that the silver will be oxidised. We have to flip over the silver equation. Therefore, we get silver becoming silver ions plus an electron. On the other side, the chlorine solution can stay as it is and will be reduced. We'll have chlorine gaining two electrons to become two chloride ions. Before we can combine these two equations, we need to multiply the silver equation by two. This means that we will have chlorine plus two electrons plus two silver to give two chloride ions plus two silver ions plus two electrons. We can then cancel the two electrons. This gives us chlorine plus two silver to give two chloride ions plus two silver ions. Thank you for watching my video on electrochemical cells. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for flashcards throughout the year and updates on new videos. Bye for now.